Hi everyone, welcome to Neve's Art Journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at part two of our layered embossing powders and how to use it in your art journal. So here I've got a use it up page in my art journal and I've just put some of the Versamark re inker into a spray bottle with a little bit of water. Now I hadn't cleaned my spray nozzle very well when I did this so it clogged which is why I'm spraying it across my page. Now the page that I'm working on is in the Dina Wakely journal it's cotton rag paper and I haven't gessoed this page which is really really important and what you can see happening is you can see some of the embossing powder going on but you can see some are really really fine dots and I was wondering what was happening it took me a little while to work it out but basically what was happening was because I was working on an unsealed paper the inks in the background or the colour in the background that you can see is very, very, very watered down acrylic paint. So the paper still had a lot of tooth to it and you can see the water there just evaporating in or soaking into the paper, sorry, absorbing into the paper. So what I'm doing with this page is I'm using the embossing powders as a resist. And on this page, if you follow my channel, I've actually done how to make your own resist ink which is what you can see in the background and that ended up on this page working a lot better than the embossing powder and the reason for that is because I was working in an unsealed paper. So I'm using the same technique that I was doing in part one which is using a stencil and stamping my Versamark pad through it and then putting the embossing enamel over the top. Now what happens with embossing enamel when it's on an uncoated paper or unsealed paper is because it's more porous it will actually soak into the paper. On chipboard or on MDF it's very very tightly packed so the um, embossing powder doesn't sort of go into the fibres of the paper all that much. It sits on the surface but on this paper because it's so open it actually sort of sinks in. And while it works pretty well here, you can see the words come up. Um, if you actually felt that page, it's quite flat. It's not as dimensional as you would expect it to be. And particularly up the top where I did those dots and dabs, you can't see them very well because again, the embossing enamel has sort of soaked into the page. However, the resist using the uh, polyurethane varnish is working really, really well. So what I did to make it as obvious as possible is to paint over the page with some watered down black just to try and get those words coming to the front. Now because this is in my art journal I wasn't expecting it to be perfect and I don't mind that it's not perfect. It's supposed to be that sort of messy, grungy, just sort of sit in the background. It was just an effect that I wanted to have. Because on this page, a lot's been happening recently. Um, I was in hospital last week and all sorts of things have been happening. And I just wanted to get it out and page, which is why I chose the spill and write and paint. Because I hadn't felt up to being in my art room for a while. So I just needed to get in and just go bleh into my art journal. And this felt like the perfect page to do it. So what I'm using is some of the Dina Wakely collage papers um, and I thought I'd use the white to sort of go with that resist and you can see here I'm using a fairly dirty paintbrush but I'm actually, it was accidental but it works out in the end because it kind of tints the back of the page so it blends in a little bit more. If I'd used a perfectly clean brush that tissue paper would still kind of stand out or be a very obvious grey against that black background. By using a little bit of the dirty paintbrush, it blends it in so it kind of fits a little bit better. So once I'd done this, I wanted to spill my guts and just write. And that's part of the reason why I've sped this bit up, because no one needs to sit here and see me write my journal. No, it's just messy writing. It doesn't, even I, if I went back today, probably couldn't read much of it, but um, I just need to get it out on the page. So I ended up using a Uniball Signo because my Sharpie Fine paint pen 
uh, has died because I've used it so much and I'm devastated that they've discontinued it because it's one of the best white pens I've ever come across. So when I finish writing, while I like that paint and uh, the resist that I did, I wanted just to make it a little bit more obvious. So I've just gone back in with my white pen just to highlight it somewhat. So as I was doing this, I was thinking, well, what happens if I did this on a gessoed page? What would be the difference? So I decided to do that for you. So when I woke up the next morning, I gessoed my page and I did the same technique again, but with a gesso page. Now you can see I'm put on, on the gesso in the thinnest possible manner. You can still see the images in the background. So I haven't blocked those out at all. It was just the thinnest smear of gesso over the top. But that is enough to help this technique work really, really well. So what I'm doing again, like on the last page, is doing a coloured background because I want to have some colour peeking through. And that's the reason why I'm using clear. I could do this with any coloured embossing enamel or embossing powder, it wouldn't matter. But because I want to use clear, I need to have something in the background. So I'm just going in with very watered down Dina Wakely um, heavy bodied acrylics and just messing around. So I think on this page I use cheddar, lemon, fuchsia, which is my new go-to, and some lemon. What I'm doing here is when I did the stencil remove, it was just too wet, so I've just dried it off a little bit, and you can see that that stencil removing is happening a lot better now. And I've got a really nice page to use for something else in the, in the meantime. So I make sure I dry it off fairly thoroughly, and my idea for this, and this is why there's a little bit of a delay, is I want to have a figure coming down on the um, right hand side. So I, I knew I wanted to have some words or something in the figure. So that's why I'm stamping on that right hand side. So I've just got Dina Wakely stamp, a brand new stamp set. I love handwriting, I love circles, so it's just perfect for me. Now the stamp ink I'm using is a Versafine ink. I didn't dry this before I went on to do this. I really should have because some of the embossing powder stuck to uh, some of the stamped images because it wasn't quite dry enough. If you'd used an archival ink, that would dry instantly, so that wouldn't be an issue for you. Um, or just hit it with a heat gun, it doesn't take very long. I did hit it with a heat gun, but obviously not long enough just to dry it off. The Versafine has a little bit of oil in it, which um, is why it can go on everything. Uh, but it um, takes a little bit longer to dry. Now with this, because I wanted to put the figure in, I didn't want the ampersands, so I'm just using some washi to block those off, and I'm using my Versafine pad, a Versamite pad again, to stamp through so I can put my embossing powder down. Because the spine of the book still was quite damp, um, you can see there's a little bit of extra powder there. So I'm just going in with a, a clean paintbrush and just knocking off the powder that I don't need or don't want in my journal. And it brushes off really, really easily. You just tap it any excess off. The other thing that you can do is just go onto the next page and tap it lightly and that will remove any um, just extra um, embossing powder that's there. But again, because this is in my art journal, I don't mind that there's some extra there. Now while you're doing this, and it's really hard to see on screen, I apologise that, you can see the glossy areas coming up, but because it is a clear resist type technique, it's really hard for you to see until I add a darker contrast colour over the top. So just trust me that those, those words are there. So this is the figure I'm using. Again, it's another Dina Wakely stamp. And you can see I'm pressing down fairly hard. I want the ink to stay there. And I'm pouring on the ink, yeah, I'm pouring on the ink, pouring on the embossing powder. And I'm being quite generous when I pour it on. And you can see how much has stayed on the image. Now, on this one, I'm doing, going to do a few layers of the embossing enamel. And what I'm going to do, our embossing powder, is I'm going to embed some of that tissue paper in. The great thing about the tissue paper is, as soon as I embed it into that clear, embossing powder is it's going to disappear and all I will have is those white words floating on top of my figure. 
You can see there I didn't go back with my VersaFine my first mic pad to put an extra coat of ink on. The reason for that is um, if you put ink in between each layer of your embossing powder what you end up with is three or four very very thin layers of plastic with some ink in between. By bonding the layers together you get one thick cohesive piece of plastic and um, it makes it all stay together. So when I've got it thick enough what I've done is I've just pushed it in gently with my um, knife just to make sure it's sort of embedded in and I've just gone over the top and sprinkled a little bit of extra embossing enamel over the top to seal that piece of paper into my image and to make sure when I put the paint over the top it's not going to colour that image. I want it to stay translucent and that's why I was having a little feel over the top. I didn't want to feel any of the tissue paper. If I had I would have put more embossing enamel or embossing powder over the top. Now you can see here I've I've sprayed my page with water beforehand and I've used some night paint to go over the top and you can see straight away that all those um, images that I've coloured in with are done with the embossing powder resist the ink or the paint and come straight up. So you've got a beautiful colour from the background, you've got the stamps from the background, you've got that embedded image in the background and it hasn't taken very long to do. I think this page took me about 15 minutes to do. I have sped it up somewhat for you, um, but it was a really, really quick page to complete. It's not, you know, crisp and perfect and clean, but it's never going to be when you're using something or materials like this. So here are some other examples of um, using embossing powders in my journal. So this is the page you saw me create before and I just added a little dimensional star. This is the page I have and you can see those white words sort of floating above the stamping. This is another technique that I've done coming up which is making using embossing powder to make a seal in my page and that's found on in one of my videos in the Nick Bantock videos if you go back and look at those. This is a page where I just sprinkled randomly some embossing powders across my page just to create that sort of dotty white effect. And this is a page I've done using chipboard letters where I've embossed them in different colours. Some of them I've stamped onto and stamped into so you can see a texture. Some I've just stamped on top of and you can see the stenciling in the background. So I hope that this is helpful for you and you're going to break out your embossing enamel, uh, embossing powders and have a go in your art journals. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit subscribe if you think any of this was useful to you and I will see you next time. Bye.